here is the supposed alleged drama in regards to the $100,000 OTK Duel Tournament, which happened yesterday. This is the number one thread on the Classic Rust subreddit right now. Let's see what people are talking about. As a participant of the OTK Mock Gora, everyone knew Snod Senzico would win from day one. Well, okay. I don't know if this is alleging a conspiracy or not, but Snuts and Zico are like two of the best PVPers in the world. So it's a, it's a good bet. If you had to bet on it going into it, I think putting your money on Snuts or Zico is probably a good bet because they're both really, really good and everyone knows that. But let's see what is the content of the post. <clears throat> this is not a hate, a hate post or anything. I had a great time playing in the tournament and made some cool friends doing it so I don't regret my time. But from day one, the entire tournament was already decided in favor of these two, and it was easy to see why. It was already decided in favor of these two. So the only way that you could like decide the winner of a tournament preemptively, kind of, if there is a conspiracy, is to try to give them the best tournament bracket seed possible to give them the easiest matchups all along the way. <clears throat> Did that happen? I don't know. We're never going to know. Let's keep reading. If you go back a month to Snot's VOD, a day before the tournament, he already had over 3,000 gold on the server along with Titan Flasks, important consumables that later were going for insane prices. He had all of the best BOEs for leveling the end game. And right as soon as the tourney started, he had a booster who took him from 1 to 60 without dying and even got a title charm without ever having to camp it. Usually a three to four day respawn highly contested before anyone else. Okay, so I'm going to try to play devil's advocate here. I'm going to be non-conspiratorial. Snots is a famous PvPer. He's known as one of the best World of Warcraft peers of all, PvPers of all time. He also is a pretty successful streamer. He has hundreds or maybe, I don't know, thousands of viewers on Twitch. I'm not sure. And uh, he has a big YouTube presence. People watch his YouTube videos. And so is it possible that he just has uh, viewers that want to support him in the tournament and they were happy to give him things because they knew he was competing in the tournament and they thought that he had a reasonable chance to win? Because he's such a good PvPer. Uh, yeah, I think that's entirely possible. Now, I will say this. This is a decision I made as a streamer. And so, uh, I'm going let to... Me, let, me, let me walk through this. I, I do think, unless you're a big streamer who was able to get assistance or boosting or gold handouts or help from your viewers or from a community that you're a part of, it probably was not worth competing in that tournament. That's my take. And that's actually a decision that I made for myself. I decided, I leveled up for two days and I said, you know what? I don't have that type of viewership. I don't have that type of like apparatus. I don't have that many people on that server that can help me out, that can give me gold, that can boost me. And I see other people do. And I've only got so much free time in my day. Is this a good way to spend my time? Um, for, and it's, it's a month long time commitment. Um, and it's, it's, it's an equation of, okay, uh, am I even going to win? Is it worth it? Is it not? Do I have what I need to win the support, the community? I said, I don't. So I dropped out after two days. I said, this is probably not going to work out for me after I saw how sweaty the tournament was becoming. And by sweaty, I mean, just how much assistance people were getting. There were some rumors of RMT going on. I don't know. RMT meaning real money trading. So I said, you know what? Not for me, but I, I, I do think if you're just like an average guy, I've got four hours to play in the evening and that's, and that's it. And I'm just like a normal guy. Yeah. This tournament was probably not for you. That's the unfortunate reality. That's the way it goes. Let's keep on reading. He was so far ahead. He took a week and a half break to go to Vegas, came back and still had better gear, more gold and resources than 90% of the competition. So the only way that you will not have this phenomenon occur in a dual tournament where people are uh, getting assistance or help or boosting or gold or whatever is to have a solo self-found hardcore dual tournament. And by solo self-found, I mean you need to level up on your own, no trading, no auction house, no boosting, entirely solo. That's the only way. And if we have a tournament like that, I would be really interested in competing with that. Um, but you understand why OTK, who was hosting this tournament, chose not to go that route because from their end, they are facilitating the tournament, they're moderating, they've got referees, they've got a support staff. They really have no way to guarantee 
that everyone is playing 100% solo at all times because some people are streaming, some people are not. It takes place over the course of a month. It's just impossible to guarantee that people are solo or not. They're not getting help. They are getting help. Someone gave them five gold. Are they disqualified? All of those little tiny logistics, it makes sense why they chose not to even. They just said, you know what? Do whatever you want. The tournament is no rules in that regard. Just go. And does that favor it a little bit towards streamers or people with big communities? Yeah, no doubt. That sucks. That's the way life goes. Ho hopefully, hopefully, we do have a solo self-found SSF is, what's that, is what that's called. Hopefully, we do have an SSF tournament of some sort. And then, and then that can be a little bit more inclusive of people that do not have a giant supportive community that a streamer or a YouTuber might have. Let's continue reading. We're halfway done. <clears throat> Zico had a similar situation where his viewers boosted him while he was AoE leveling by not allowing him to die and by doing massive pulls. He was also given thousands of gold and had friends in the only raiding guild on the server, so he was given recipes, gear, consumables very early on, and he even managed to raise the market price on a lot of things so other competitors couldn't get a hold of it. I'm going to be on. Yeah, that's that sucks for you. This this of course, I chose not to compete. I'm with this guy. I'm like, it probably was not worth my time com to compete. I'm telling you guys, it's probably not worth your time to compete because you're not a big streamer that has all the support. That's the way the tournament goes, though. We knew the rules of the tournament two or three days prior to the tournament even beginning. Okay, you could look at those rules and you can know exactly this is what it's going to be. There was no confusion about how this was going to go. Okay, we had the rules a couple days before. You look at the rules, you say, yeah, you know what? This one's not for me. Okay, let's continue reading. Both of them are incredible players, very skilled with a massive fan base, so it, this isn't to hate on them or anything, but the tournament itself was never going to be won from a dark horse non-streamer unless they bought a ton of gold to compete and had a whole month to grind, and even then, they'd be behind the streamers by a large margin. Probably true. That's, that's probably true. Yep, that seems to be true. It is what it is. It was still a fun event, but it was also decided from day one what the outcome would be. Well, I mean, it it wasn't decided, okay? It most certainly favored streamers that have a large audience, no doubt. But it wasn't, it wasn't, um, pre, it wasn't coordinated in, in that way. It wasn't calculated. It's not like, okay, this is, this is, we, we're going to guarantee a snuts victory. It's not like that. That's not what it is. It most certainly had a favor for people that uh, have big communities that can support them. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I just wish some no-name guys can have a shot at a top spot to shake up the scene. But like any other WoW tourney, it's always going to be the same names every year because it's what gets the most views and attention, which is a bit disappointing. Um, well, I'm not sure it's like every other WoW tourney. Uh, this one is kind of uniquely favoring streamers, but I think most PvP tournaments are probably not favoring streamers. Who knows what they'll do? Um, who knows? Maybe they'll do an SSF, that's solo self-found, version of the tourney too in the future, or maybe some new rules for the next time, and they learn from this time. But overall, it was May, it was a fun ride, and I hope to see more stuff like this down the road. This just sounds... This just sounds kind of uh, like complaining, I'm just going to be honest. Yeah, we, we, all, we all knew that these were the rules. From day one, no, from, from day negative five, five days before the tournament started or so, we had the rules, four or five days. We knew what the rules were going to be. We knew that it was going to be gloves off. We knew that it was kind of everything goes. We knew that, and as such, streamers were people that uh, were able to get a community that could support them and give them free stuff. We knew that that was what the meta is. Yeah, no doubt. Gold and support and getting boosted and having uh, groups that can carry you through dungeons, that's, that's obviously going to help you. And so if you have an apparatus like that, a support group or support apparatus, of course that's going to be uh, a ben beneficial for you. Let me take a look here. This is the top comment in the thread. I think most people already knew this was the case. I was excited to watch people level up and see how they geared, but every time I tuned into a stream, it was just watching them get power leveled or shoveled gold or consumes or whatever. To be fair to the to the streamers here that are getting uh, given free gold and boosted, like Snuts or Zico or actually like a lot of them that competed, um, first off, there's no rule against that. So I don't think you can blame them for getting boosted or given free shit given there's no rule disallowing that. Second off, there's $50,000 on the line. So of course, of course, they're going to do everything they can in that regard as long as it's within the rules. Um, you can understand why they're doing it. Where it gets a little bit fishy, and I, I, uh, I'm not going to name names or anything like that. There are rumors of people that were buying gold, 
there are rumors of people that were saying, hey, listen, if you support me, if you boost me, if you give me free stuff, then if I win, I will give you some of my winnings. Okay, if you support me, I'll give you 10% of everything I win or stuff like that. There are rumors of that. Um, I'll say non-confirmed. So if if that's happening, non-confirmed, if, if that's happening, then that's in bad faith. That's a little bit toxic. That's not so good. But um, just having a community that's looking to support you, uh, that, that, that is within the rules. That is what it is. Uh, obviously, this is going to happen, but the fact that they all did it on stream, not even pretending to be doing it themselves, ruined the whole tournament for me. There's no way to enforce. You can't have your viewers help or hell, even no gold buying. So it is what it is. There is no way to enforce. You can't have your viewers help. That is true. Or you can't have free handouts or you, there, there's no way. And, th and so that is the reason why. In fact, I think that the OTK guys, I think that they said, you know, we would prefer to have a tournament where you're not getting boosted, where you're not getting free gold, but we don't have a way to facilitate a tournament like that. We don't have that degree of oversight. So as such, we're just going kind of in the opposite direction. No rules because we can't go that direction. Um, like I said, if Blizzard ever decides to offer an official solo self-found game mode option, and they said that they would, they said that they would, we will have that at some point on the hardcore servers. That would be great. Then I hope Then I hope that we have another tournament similar to this with a big price pool and everyone can get involved because then effectively, um, the, the only difference between you and the streamer in your you know, capacity to compete effectively in that tournament is how much time can you invest, right? So the streamer can play 12 hours a day. If you can play 12 hours a day, then you're on the same footing. It's all good. So there's that. Um, while I agree the outcome was fairly easy to see happening, would you have rathered they not stream themselves getting help? I think I'm happy at least they weren't trying to hide it Tournament outcome would have felt even worse for me. I mean, why hide it? It's within the rules. It's not against the rules. They have no reason to hide it, right? So I guess I guess that's the the dr the drama, the recap. Uh, this is pretty inconsequential. Um, by the way, there there were some people in the tournament that scored very highly that maybe even got best of class, which was a six thousand two hundred and fifty dollar prize pool. If you got the the best of your class in the tournament, that did not get boosted. Um, I'm trying to think. I think Zeroji, Zeroji the Hunter. Uh, I think he was the highest placing hunter. So he got the $6,000, $6,250. And he did not get boosted. He did not have handouts. So maybe it depends on your class. Uh, it was situationally possible. I'm not sure. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, Bean got it. Bean got it. And so Bean probably, Bean is a streamer. So he probably had some support. He probably had some help. Never mind. Okay, so Bean got it. Those streamers, those damn streamers. Urgh. But no, I mean, yo, I'm, I'm a streamer. I can play all day and maybe I could get some handouts. I looked at this tournament and I was like, listen, this is not worth it for me. One, because I don't think I'm going to be able to get that amount of support. And then also two, you know, I'm not the best PVP -er in the world. And so it's like, okay, you know, maybe it's worth it. Maybe it's not. I did the equation in my head. I said, okay, this is just not a good way for me to spend my time. And so most certainly if you're not a streamer and maybe you're an average PVP -er. Yeah, this tournament was not for you. I hate to say it. In fact, I'm going to get into the business of this a little bit. This tournament was hosted by Starforge PCs. Starforge PCs is a pre-built PC company. It's a subsidiary of OTK. OTK owns it, okay? And so they're selling their, their PC computers. Starforge PC fronted the $100,000 for the prize pool. Why do you think Starforge PC would host a dual tournament where they are losing $100,000. Why would they put up $100,000? It's because the entire tournament is an advertisement for their product, okay? Every single person at the end of their name, all the competitors had to have uh, SF, whatever, like Starforge something something. It was a four letter acronym. So they, so every, every competitor's character name had an advertisement at the end of the name. Every person had to be in the guild the guild name was uh, Starforge PC. And then, of course, during all the live coverage and the broadcasting, the streamers are shouting it out. The host is shouting it out. This tournament is brought to you by Starforge PC. Go check it out. Use this discount code, whatever. So the entire thing um, is an advertisement for Starforge PC. And that's fine. That's all good. It's okay to make money and also have a cool product. In this case, the product is an awesome dual tournament. So it's fine. It's fine. That's awesome. But from that lens, it makes sense why Starforge PC, who's trying to host the tournament to get advertisement or promotion for their product, 
it makes sense why they would want to have streamers involved. Okay, let's say no streamers competed in the $100,000 tournament, then no one would be watching and then they would be advertising to nobody. But the more streamers that are in the tournament, promoting and hyping the tournament, you've got this guy with 10,000 viewers, this guy with 5,000 viewers, this guy with 3,000 viewers, whatever. Okay, the more eyeballs you have on the tournament through the streamers, watching the streamers, the higher return on investment Starforge PC has, okay? So it's, it's very clear what the dynamic is, and I'm not throwing shade. That's like business 101. That's called a, it's like a sponsored tournament. That's how, that's how the world works. But yeah, like let's not beat around the bush. That's the point, right? If, if Starforge made no money from hosting the tournament, then they wouldn't host the tournament. Then there would be no prize pool. That's the way that it goes. Sorry. Okay, um, but that's the drama. This is a nothing burger. This sounds kind of whiny. What do you think? Let me know in the chat. Let me think in the comments down below. This is a nothing burger. Okay, thanks for tuning in. As always, stay safe.